Well, hi again guys. It's back to that time of year again, that's, which everyone loves, including me, it's a fun time of year, so. Uh, in a couple of days, December starts. And that usually means the mackerel are showing up. I have heard of a few spotty mackerel and stuff down off Palm Beach already. Um, and a handful off the seaway as well, which is, it's, it's good for this time. Hopefully it's going to be a cracking season. The last couple haven't been nothing flash. Anyway, not, enough of that. Um, I did notice a friend was playing my videos the other day and playing my mackerel videos, and I did notice, and I totally forgot about them, sorry, that when I first started and done these videos, these last ones were like in 360p. And I was watching a video and was, oh, I was shaking my head, it was disgusting. Um, so what I was gonna do, instead of making a heap of different mackerel videos like I started off with, what I'm gonna do today, guys, is just give you a run, one, do one big video on different ways I chase and catch mackerel off the Gold Coast. From bait fishing to trawl on down riggers to trawl on lures, and just bits and pieces in between. Um, it's, I don't know how long it'll go for, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes or something, so a decent video. I'm gonna talk about the gear, I talk, just basically wrap everything up into one for you. But I'm not gonna do any rigging today, because that will just take too long. I was gonna say, guys, if you want me to redo some rigging videos on how to rig up some of these mackerel rigs, just let me know in the comment section below on the rigs you want me to see me make up, like dead bait rigs, trawling rigs, live bait rigs, uh, float lining rigs for spotties, Whatever the rig is that you hear me talking about through the video, if you want to see the rigging process, just let me know in the comments and I'll do separate videos for those later on. Okay? Alright, let's get into this. So as these are spotties are here, here first, we'll talk about the spotties at the moment. There's a couple of different ways to catch spotties. And I'm going to talk about one way is a bit unorthodox that a lot of people don't do. Okay, but the first one's going to start off very basic. So most people down Palm Beach Brief. Uh, dropped anchor, set out a belly trail, and just floating out like half a pilchard on a, like a float lining rig, just so, uh, okay? And the rigs are very simple. We'll start off with this one. So we've got a short 27 pound wire, little swivel crimped on, and a hook crimped on. What we do is put half a pilly on that, throw it on the back of the boat, let it waft down through the belly trail, because you're throwing out chunks of belly, you're getting the belly trail going, getting the mackerel coming to you. And so is the guy next to you and in front of you and all around you. So a lot of belly in the water. Just float down pillies on a rig like that. And the other way I showed you to do, this is the way I like to do it, it's, it's quick and easy, you can do it on the fly, is get yourself some soft 27 pound or 20 to 30 pound wire, that's nylon coated, okay, and it's very soft. Because this is tieable, tieable. So what I do, you don't need crimps and pliers and everything else out in the boat. You just need some decent 4 O's and a short bit of wire, a pair of pliers to cut the wire, most of us got pliers on board. And what we do is just tie a snail on the hook. See that, it's just got a snail. Now the other end, I've cut it off now, but you see, I just hold it all bright to like a 20 pound or a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, just an all bright. And that's plenty, that's all you need for spotties. So you don't need to take all your crimps and your pliers and everything out in the boat to make those. These are good and fun to make at home while watching TV. But out in the boat, when you're on the fly, or you need some hooks and some wires and something to cut the wire, and you're good to go. Okay? And they work very well with half pillies just floating down through the belly trail at the back of your boat. That's how probably 90% of people do it. It is a good fun way of fishing, and when the fish are on, you'll see boats everywhere, you'll know where the fish are, because you'll watch the guy next to you catch it, and the guy over there catch one, and you just watch it as the fish are traveling around through the school or through around the reef, you'll see the boats around you start hooking up, and you'll know when it's coming to your turn. It's not bad, it's a bit of fun. Okay, the other way to do it is cast slugs. Okay, so even while you're flo floating pillies down, if it's really quiet, you can start casting a few slugs. And what I mean by slugs, are just metal, metal slugs. Because most of the spotties are in close, they're feeding on like little bait fish, like little white baits and things. So just match the hatch, the old saying, match the hatch. So I've just got little slugs like these, these are like 20 to 30 grams quite small, just make sure you put some decent hooks on them because you are chasing spotties. Don't leave the you know, pathetic hooks they come with. Put some, upgrade some good hooks and tie these slugs straight on. I know a lot of you are gonna say you're gonna get bitten off and lose a few slugs. Well, you are, yes. 
but you'll catch a lot more fish. If you put a wire trace on the front of this, you'll get the occasional fish, but not as many. You'll get a lot more without wire. And to be honest, you don't really lose that many. So if you lose one or two slugs to catch five spotties, well, why not? It's a lot of fish for a couple of slugs. Okay, that's one of my favorites, a little black and silver. There's the other one, just looks like a white bait. Also a good one. And the third one that we've come out in the last few years and we're using a lot of are just the resin ones. These resin ones are quite good too. Um, in the bigger version of these, they work really well on Spanish as well. But what I like doing with the resin ones, and even the slugs, instead of just casting them out and then skipping along the surface winding really fast, which you can do, if the spotties and stuff are a bit quiet and they're gone deep, cast these out, let them sink down, and then wind your line back through the water column. Okay? Just let them sink down and wind it back through the water column. That seems to work really well and triggers a bite. Just be very wary on how far you drop them because you are fishing on a bit of reef and they will snag. Okay, so that's the other way to go. And the next one, this one's not many people does this one, um, but it does work very well when you do do it, is trolling. But I'm not talking about trolling baits here. This is all about just, this is just, you know, spotties for, on dead baits and spotties on lures. Next one is trawling little hard bodies like so. Okay? This is actually a double clutch. Look at that. These little double clutches, they've got a good bib, so you can trawl them quite quickly, five, six knots, not a problem in the world. They've got a really sharp shimmy. They shine like mad, and spotties jump all over them. People don't trawl these type of things for spotties for some reason. They're either out trawling big lures, like I've got here, for Spanish and maybe snagging the occasional spotty, or they're trawling baits which work very well, we'll get to that. But here's something a bit different. Double clutches, these things. They'll get down, you know, like a couple of meters, which is good, and sharp, sharp shimmy, which attracts the spotties. Spotties jump all over these things, guys. No one does it, I don't know why. And once again, I wouldn't run wire, you get more hits without wire. But seeing these aren't a cheap, a cheap lure, I wouldn't blame you if you do put wire on it. Just make it a short wire, all right? Just make it very short, it's just a bite trace. Just very short. Don't make it too long. Okay, try that one. Just, it doesn't even have to be a double clutch, guys. Just something small with a good sharp shimmy, nice skinny profile with a decent bib that'll actually get you down a couple of meters. Okay, that's a good way to find mackerel as well, especially spotties. And if there is spendings in the area, they will hit those. Don't think it's only for small, like spotties. Spanish will hit them as well, don't worry. And since we're talking about lures for spotties, there's one last one. Um, almost forgot about this one, sorry. This one's basically another casting one. But instead of casting the slugs, okay, you can cast these little twitch baits. This is the little Rapala, I believe. It is, a little ripstop. Yeah, that's, that's what it is, ripstop. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. But anyway, something along the lines of these, little Rapala, little bib, twitch baits. These are good fun around, them, like Mermaid, the bait reefs off, um, off the seaway, Palm Beach. Just in shallow. Just cast these things and twitch them around the, around the top. Just get them, you know, going really aggressive and then stop dead. Make them act like a you know, wounded bait fish or something. And sometimes these things are really good and will trigger a bite when nothing else is. Another thing is, guys, everyone's casting slugs and throwing out bellies. So mackerel are seeing them every day. These things I don't see very often because no one's doing it. And sometimes it's always good to change, change the method. Once again, I don't run wire, but since they're not cheap lures, you can just make it a short, short bite trace. That's it. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways you can chase some spotties. So that's the first bit. Uh, what are we to next? Okay, next we'll go to, we'll more as well keep the lure, lure one um, going, but this time we'll talk about Spanish. Okay, so Spanish, a new thing, or not new, but not, not too many people are doing this still. Is when you're out wider on uh, like 24 fathoms, 18s and 24s and you know, like 35 to 45, 50 meters. And you see bait balls down, down deep, and you can even sometimes mark the Spanish. A lot of guys will mark the Spanish on them. And they're not feeding. Your baits are up high. You're not having much luck. Try some micro jigging, slow pitch jigging. 
Spanish like these things. These do work really well. And I've got to tell you, when you hook a Spanish like on your little slow pitch rod, I've got one, where'd I put it? Ready somewhere? They're good fun, they really go hard. Okay, so just try some micro-jigging around bait balls out wider if you're not getting, having much luck with bait or anything. Or later in the day when the sun's high and the fish are down deep, try some micro-jigs, some slow pitch jigging. The only suggestion is don't worry about you running hooks like this, okay, because they're going to get bitten off. Mackerel teeth go straight through that. I make my own, I just do, do my own, make my own toothy critter hooks, like so. And they don't get bitten off, they work an absolute treat. Once again, you can run wire off the top of this if, if, if you want to, if you don't want to lose your jigs. But just make it very short, like a couple of inches. It's just a bite trace. That's all it is. Just make it very short. Okay, so I'll put a link in the description down below on how I make my hooks for these things. Especially for toothy critters. They're very quick and easy. That's a double, but I prefer the single one. I've got a single one here, so here's my outfit. You can see the single hook there. And that works an absolute treat, okay? Okay. The next thing, I'm gonna keep with the lure theme for the Spanish, is if you're in the shallow reefs, once again, mermaid, palmy, bait reefs, in the back of the shark nets where you get a lot of mackerel, don't be scared to run a few stick baits along the surface. Stick baits are always good fun for mackerel. And their aerial strikes are friggin' awesome when they come out and hit these things going flying through the air, it's great. If you know there's a lot of bait around, cast a few stick baits around the around the bait in close. Just something different. Okay? Um, just wind, don't do anything fancy and twitch on them, just wind flat out. Just get them skipping on the surface like a fleeing bait fish, like they're fleeing from something. Mackerel's instincts kick in, all they want to do is chase it and smash it, eat it. They won't get time to look at it. That's a new thing from Shimano, I don't know how that will go, but it's interesting. I'm have to give it a crack, see how she goes. Might be more of a tailor lure, but we'll see. Better, like this. These are like type of stick baits. And one row out a bit wider. This is a sinking stick bait. Also very good. Instead of using slugs, you can get things like this and they will sink. So let it sink down through the water column, down deep to your bait, bait balls, and rip it back through the water column or really get it winding fast and get it to skip along the surface. I will get it to the surface and skip. You gotta really crank it though, or have a high speed reel. But I like with these things, these bigger ones and flash, I like to send them down deep and bring them back through the water column. That seems to work an absolute treat as well, especially for Spanish. Okay? So, don't forget the old stick baits. And once again, if you get, if you get a mackerel or a hit on a stick bait, guys, you'll absolutely, you'll absolutely love it. They get airborne and carry on, it's, it's very exciting fishing. Very visual fishing, it's fun. Okay, and probably the last but not least for the lures in Spanish, once again, back to trawling. Okay, this is what 90% of people do. Or used to, now they're in the downriggers, but still, a lot of people haven't, haven't got downriggers. Still trawling good old lures. But over the last few years, we've noticed most of the lures, most of the fish being caught are on deeper divers. So this is a Samaki pacemaker. These will get down five or six meters, quite a big bib. These things are awesome, they're a great lure. I don't know why I bought purple, I think purple a couple of years ago was a good color, so I bought it, haven't run it, but <laughs> there it is. But anyway, that's, the Samaki pacemakers, pacemakers over the last few years have been the go-to lures for mackerel trawling off the Gold Coast. The Nomads have also worked quite well. A very big bib, as you see. A great troll and lure. And then you got your old faithfuls. Not as expensive, still work an absolute treat. Just your old Halcos, your two meter bibs, and they're deep divers. The reason I've got this one out is when you're running like some hard body lures, don't put like two out, put three or four if you can. At least two or maybe four, depends on how many rod holes and rods. But have a deep diver out, and this one's a two meter diver. Have a shallow diver out, so you're covering two different water depths, okay? Don't just have all deep or all shallow. Mix them up, have a bit of both. Okay, and then I was gonna show you, once again, I've talked about it before. If you can get the old CDs, the Rapala CDs, these are shallow dives, only dive about two meters. But shit, these things work well. They're one of my all time favorite lures. 
and they catch everything from mackerel, wahoo, tuna, dolphin fish, everything eats these. They're fantastic. It's getting harder to find too, by the way. Okay, that's enough of the Spanish mackerel on lures. Now we'll get the, some baits. Um, for spotties and spanish. So first of all, we'll talk about the spotties with the baits, bait rigs. Two different ways. First one's the one everyone knows about, most people know about, is your gang talk, your little squid with your nose cones. And this is what we uh, call a pilly rig, basically. We put pilchards on these. Okay, a nice little rig. And once again, if you want to see me rig these up, just ask me in the comments and I'll do a separate video on how to rig them up again. Because I know last time I'd done it, the quality wasn't that good, so we'll, we'll revise that at some stage. But these ones, these are a pilly rig. Small, light, good to go under little rods and trawl around in close for spotties. Spotties love these things, they jump all over them. But also saying that, you will catch Spanish on trawl and pilchards. Don't worry, Spanish will eat it too. They love pillies as well. But you'll get spotties, you'll get both on these. So nice little light rigs. If you just mainly want to chase Spanish, same rig, bigger version. And I'll put like garfish on this, pike, things like that. Okay, longer, skinnier bait fish. Once again, and these are the ones I usually trawl out a bit deeper, like the 18s and 24s. Um, as is, you don't put them behind it. You can put them behind a downrigger if you want, but I don't. I just trawl them as is. But the catch with these things and the smaller one here, there is one thing you can do to help up get you know, get more bites. Is when you keep an eye on your sounder. When you see bait balls down deep, stop the boat. Pull the boat out of gear. You're only in idle with these things, by the way. You're only trawling slow in idle. But stop your boat, let these sink down, okay? And then when you're a bit of guesswork down near the bottom or near the bait ball, put it back in gear, pull it, your bait out of the bait ball or from down deep, and then do a big circle, come around to the bait ball you've marked on your sounder, hopefully you've marked. Come back around, stop your boat, let this sink down, drive away, pull it out, and then go around, and keep repeating that process of thing. And that will entice a bite usually from Spanish and Spotties. Just, just don't trawl around with them in gear and stay. Go in and out of gear. Let these things sink down to where the bait is or what it is. If you see fish, you mark fish, let it sink down. See bait, let it sink down. Pull it out. Don't just drive around with it on, a, on the surface. In and out of gear. Let these things sink down, pull out of the, and drive it back through the water column. That's a good way to entice bites. Okay. Um, so they're the dead bait rigs. Like I said, you can run anything from like Taylor, Benito, like you can just make these bigger, same sort of things, just upgrade the hooks and the sinkers and everything else, and just bigger baits. Next one's a live bait rig. Back to basics. So a treble, little inline hook, sinker. What we do with this one is just get yakas or slimies or whatever bait you've got live, pierce this through the nose, through the nose, that's it. I used to put the treble in the trail, but not anymore. Nowadays, we just set the trail. Because when you're pulling these along just in gear, the little yakas and stuff are swimming down on the surface just nicely. This will just trail behind their tail. Okay, you don't need to pierce it, put it into their skin. Just let it just let it trail behind the hook, okay? That's fine. And most of the mackerel, when they come up and hit the tail half of the, of the bait, they'll get caught on this. Not this. This hook's just there for the, basically, to hold the bait on. This is the one that catches the fish. Okay, and these rigs work really well with live baits, like I said, yakas and slimies mainly. And this one I've got a small sinker on because I run this one as is, I don't put it behind the downrigger. So when you're trawling, just in out of gear, you've got a little sinker on, that will keep him just under the surface. So this one will be just swimming around under the surface. And what I'm doing, trawling like this, I'll use the downrigger as, downriggers down as well. So I'll have another one of these rigs you can use a sinker, or I just I take the sinker off, I have rigs without the sinker. And I attach them 20 metres behind the downrigger ball. And then I'll set the downrigger to the depth where I find the bait. And generally that's usually about 5 to 10 metres off the bottom. Okay, so I'll set the downrigger, the same rig, no sinker. And I'll have one of these in the downrigger, I'll have another two of these with the sinker on the surface. And once again, just slow trawl around bait balls and bait schools, all the shallow reefs. Okay. That's a very easy, quick rig to make for trolling live baits. And it works a treat. Absolute treat. Um, what else? I was just going to show you here. Got the old faithful downrigger. 
as well. It's a downrigger from a downrigger shop. That works. It comes with a bracket on the bottom, so if I go in other people's boats, I can always just pick this downrigger up and take it to whatever boat I want to fish on, and it's ready to go. It's filled up with 90 pound braid, I only run 90. It's multicolour, so every 10 metres it changes colour. I know what depth I'm at. I don't use a counter, I just use a colour of braid. Okay? And once again, what I do a bit different, I put a heavy duty snap on the bottom, but I put a, a bright tube on here. Two reasons. First of all, if I get it too deep and the ball's going around the reef, this protects the braid from the reef. And it is a bit scuffed up at the moment. And the second is, if you get a strike on a fish and you're trying to run up your downrigger really quickly, a lot of people don't really look or forget about the ball coming up. And you come up and smash the back of the boat or anything. Um, so I've got the right bright tube on there, so when I'm cranking it up, I'll see this colour coming through the water, and I'll notice it's just below the boat, I'll stop. I'll see this before I see the ball, because it's so bright in the water. Okay. And to answer your question, I know some people are thinking that's really bright, it's going to scare the fish. Yeah, no. They don't seem to worry about it at all. Okay, so don't worry about that. So just a downrigger. Good handy way to throw dead baits and live baits down deep, especially from apple. Okay, just fell off, I fell over, that's all good. Um, okay, what else we got, guys? One last thing, yeah, we'll go through some gear. Um, we'll just go through some gear. So, first of all, I was talking about casting slugs, these little slugs, okay? For casting them, you don't need anything fancy. If I'm not around, like a lot of baits, I found some spotties, off to say the seaway or everyone else is down at Palmy and there's not many boats around I'll run me a little like flathead gear this is six or I'm sorry eight pound and spotties on this this will handle spotties easily they take a few minutes but shit they're good fun they are a lot of fun on light gear like this the only thing is don't use it when you're amongst the big crowd down at Palmy or Mermaid or somewhere because the spotties will run you around and braid is thin and sharp and it will cut through anchor ropes and people down there are angry enough as it is for some reason. So if you go cutting their anchors off, it's even worse. So don't use gear like this in big crowds, but if you buy yourself or only a couple of boats around, like gear, casting a few slugs is awesome fun. If you are in a crowd, okay, big crowds, as most of you probably will be, this update, go up a bit heavier. Like this is still a very good casting outfit. It's a seven foot, fairly soft tip. The Stratic 4000 on it, and that's got 20 pound, a really thin 20 pound braid. And I'll cast these slugs on this thing a friggin' mile. But this is 20 pound, so if I hook spotties and stuff in the crowds, I can actually put the brakes on them on this. This will put some hurt on them, and it'll get them to the boat a lot quicker and stop them running all over the ocean. This is a good way to get a, a bit of a feed. Still fun, they'll fight, not as much. The little rods are a lot more fun, but not in crowds. Okay, the next one is. If you're going to go slow pitch jigging, you've got your slow pitch rod, so I've got my little salt here, you've seen a thousand times. On the Dallas, that's a bay jigger rod. And you can see I've already got a jig on there and one of my hooks I've made up. These are my toothy critter hooks, so I'll put that link in the description. They're quick and easy to make up. But the other thing, oh, actually, the other thing about this rod, I have talked about it once before in the older videos. These are very good rods for the downrigger. Cause they're so soft in the tip when you put the downrigger down you can load them up and you've got that nice whip and okay to pull the slack line out and hopefully help set the hooks um these rods work really well in the downrigger so when i'm trawling my live baits in the downrigger this is the rod i use and when i hook spanish on this yeah you know about it it's good fun it's a lot of fun okay the next one is uh trawling a lot of guys run far too big a gear for trawling. Well, I can still go out nowadays and see them boats trawling around for Spanish mackerel off here with these things like TLD 30s and 50s and Tiagras and all sorts. They're Spanish mackerel. They don't go that hard. Um, it's all well good and well to get a fish to the boat for a feed, but that's a bit, a bit of an overkill. You can use it, not much fun. Me personally, I've got old school Old school short striker. Look at that, that's an old Speedmaster. Everyone's talking about the new Speedmasters nowadays. Look at this thing, this thing's like 25, nearly 30 years old. Still works a treat. 
The old original Speedmaster. Probably can't see it on there, but it does say Speedmaster. Shimano Speedmaster. It works an absolute treat. There's nothing wrong with it. It's quick. It gets the baits in quickly. Gets the fish in. I've only got 10 kilo mono on it on a short stroke of rod, and that knocks over pretty much everything on hooks. It's even one of my cobia rods for over winter when I'm chasing cobs. Old school works a treat. Um, okay, what else? Next thing is, oh, just a bit of gear. Guys, just a little bit of tackle. People get confused on what's to buy wire. So, if I'm tying knots, or like if I'm tying knots, or I want a nice soft wire to make me uh, live bait rigs, wherever that is, what I do it. So this one's multi-strand wire to make. It needs to be nice and soft. I've got a multi-strand wire there. You can't get this brand anymore, so don't look at the brand, but that's a 40 pound multi-strand wire. It's actually 49 strand, you wanna, see, 49 strand wire. Super soft, you can tie knots with it, you can work with it really easy. But you do need crimps and pliers, and, okay? Uh, if you wanna put a swivel on, you can tie like uni knots and stuff in it. I prefer to crimp the swivels on with that, but tie uh, it's like a snell. So it goes a bit of both ways. But that's what I like when I'm running my live bait rigs. I don't like using single strand of live baits. I'd rather have them nice and loose and, you know, okay? That's just me. Plenty of other people do use this wire, like single strand, to make your live bait rigs. But I use this when I'm making my dead bait rigs, okay? So this is the other one I use. Just Mason single strand wire. Like I've got 28 pound or something there. Uh, or that one there. Okay, that's when I'm chasing spotties. I run out my pilly rigs. Sometimes I make a float lining rig out of it, but I prefer a soft, a soft multi-strand wire for that. Okay, that's for more for spotties. And if I'm making up for Spanish, the bigger rigs, um, I run a 44 pound. So the other two I run, 27 and 44. Unless I'm using a multi-strand for, say, live bait rigs, I prefer softer where I can tie knots, where I can tie, see, a snell. Okay. I think that's about it, guys. Like I said, at the moment, it's only the start of the season. We're just, it's just starting to wind up now. Uh, between now and Christmas, the spotty should really start getting a lot thicker, like quite a lot, quite a lot more, as long as we don't get any massive downpours like last year or a heap of rain. And then after Christmas, we'll start looking at a few Spanish. Early in the season, you get a lot of the smaller ones, like six, eight kilo ones. Fun, nice eating. But the long, longer the season goes on, the bigger the fish will get. Okay, I generally don't usually start looking for Spanish for at least a month after Christmas. Where well, they're a little bit bigger. And I will tell you, you do get some pretty big fish out here at times. I do know quite a lot of guys have caught them honest fish, on scale fish, 20, 21 kilos. 22 kilos, I've got one about 22, or actually it was 22, that was my biggest one. And surprisingly guys, that was on the bait reef up the seaway, in 12 meters of water. So the big ones are there. They're rare, but later in the season they do get bigger. Um, and you will catch them, what I caught them on, was just that, just trawling a live bait on a downrigger. I had me downrigger set about seven meters, like half depth in the bait reef, and got him doing that. You do get plenty of big ones, but wait for later in the season. Uh, at the moment, it's just bodies. Hope you get out and catch a few, have a bit of fun with them. Try some of these tricks I talked about. Like, don't be scared to run little lures and stuff like that for spotties in close, along the shark nets, even down around Mermaid, Palm Beach, if you can't get a parking spot. Run things like that. They do weed them, and they're good fun, okay? Don't forget about the twitch baits. Something new to try. It does work. Okay, and one last thing before I go. I have come up with a new rig. Okay, from basically my old pro fishing career when I was up north, chasing mackerel. So I've taken that and I've put my own twist on it, so it's not quite the same, it's a bit different. But the other day I was out with a friend and we threw this over the side with a, actually put a, this, just had an old pike out of the freezer. I put a pike out, I defrosted it, put the pike on, threw it over the side on this rig, and believe it or not, we are doing just over, just on six knots with it. So we're swimming a bait at six knots. The tail was kicking, it was going like mad. I can't wait to test it like down 
around the gravel patch where it's such a big area, you got a big area to move around. Down, a lot of guys down there are running down riggers. So they put the baits down, but they're only sort of stuck to one area because only trawling so slowly with down riggers and live baits. Even these rigs, like they work, but you're only trawling so slow, so you're sort of stuck in one area. So I've designed that to swim some baits like around six knots. So you can cover more ground looking for fish on the sound. I just cover more ground like the gravel patch is huge. That'd be perfect for the gravel patch. If I start catching fish on it, guys, okay, I'll release it and I'll show you how it works. You're just going to have to wait and see. But I actually reckon that thing's going to work an absolute freaking treat. If you can get an old dead pipe from the freezer to start swimming and it'll look like a bait fish at six knots, it's a good rig. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you've got any questions about anything, please ask in the comments. If you want me to do some rigging videos on how to rig these up again and what gear I use to rig them up step by step, just ask in the comments, dead bait, live bait, uh, whatever rig. Just ask in the comments, guys, and we'll, sort of, we'll see about doing some more videos uh, soon on mackerel. And one last thing before I go, haven't been fishing for a while since I lost my other rod uh, because... Uh, my mate, friend Michael's looking at another boat. I think he's looking at other boats to buy. At the moment, he's looking, I think he's got an eye on a trophy. We'll see how we go. But if he buys it, we'll go do a video on the new boat. And if you're interested, we'll tell you when his Hain Sun is up for sale. Because that won't be far away from sale, I don't think. And that really is a beautiful little boat. She's an older Hain's, but she's a great sea boat. And we'll talk about that in a later video. See if any of you guys are after a new boat. <laughs> See you guys. See you next week.